Welcome to Moggy Box Craft. I'm Deborah. This is Andy. And today we are making apple and pear cider. Usually we make a cider by using fruit juice, mostly apple juice and adding things. But today we're going to be making cider from pressing apples and pears that we grew in our own garden. So down here I've got 3.7 kilograms of our own pears. It's conference pears. And over here I've got Rayburn apples and that's 6.3 kilos. And down there in a bucket, <laughs> we've got apples we got from Andy's uncle, and they're 12.9 kilos. So we're gonna take our apples and pears, dunk them in this water down here, give them a wee clean, chop them up into quarters, taking out the worst bits, and then we're gonna pop them into this big bucket. So we can bash them with a fence post. But more about that later. First, we're gonna chop these up into smaller pieces. Now, what do you want me to do with the pears? Just work them into sections? You just half them, probably. They're pretty, oh. Let me take that out. Not too important. They'll no. be bad, but it doesn't really matter. Just chuck it in anyway. Yeah. Think? Yeah. No, they always say the odd wee bad bit doesn't matter. Just you don't want them like, fully rotten or anything. Ah, uh, okay. Well, the pears are quite easy and quick to do then, eh? Ah, yeah. I, I picked the best fruit to do. Oh, it's not for you, Chico. <laughs> So these apples and these pears are probably clean enough that we don't have to wash them. The other apples, however, are definitely going to need a bit of a wash. They're pretty grubby. Before we chop these, we're just going to pop them in some water. And just give them a little rinse and get all the grub off them. Or the and, worst of it anyway. And then chop into pieces. We used to put the apples in a blender, but we soon discovered you don't actually need to do that. Using the post works just as good and then we just fling it all in the apple press. Are we ready to... Oh yeah, this is a happy place. Very therapeutic, this one. <laughs> Thumpy bash. <laughs> I don't think that's going to get our cider made any quicker. <laughs> are you having a good time there? Oh, this is, this is grand. And then we're just scooping the apples. Now they're all nice and bashed up into the apple press. This is now full, but it's all quite fluffy still. So we're just going to give it a bit of a squeeze down initially just to get a bit more space. And we should hopefully be able to get all of the apples in in one batch. So why are you adding all the wood? Without these wooden blocks, we'd only get down that far before the metal bar hits that, the edge uh, and we wouldn't be able to squeeze anymore. But now... There's method in the madness! We can squeeze away! As you can see by how far down the wooden blocks go, what they're actually for, it just allows us to squish them right the way down. So oh, hi, it's not apple juice for you. And we've managed to get 10 litres. So now that this has been settling for about half an hour, we're just going to try and give it a last few cranks and just see if we can squeeze that last little bit out of it. So we got all the apples pressed yesterday and then realised we only have 10 litres. Which is kind of all we were really expecting with the yield that we had this year, but actually pretty happy with the amount that we've got considering the amount of apples that we started off with. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> this morning I went out and got 11 more litres of apple juice. 
We could have just used the 10 litres, but if you're going to make a batch, you might as well make the batch worth doing and get maximum bottles out of it. So worth Thank topping you. it up. Going to be adding all this apple juice to the pressed apple juice that we've got here. And then we're going to take a strength reading. We're going to find out how much sugar is in it using one of these things. If it's not quite as strong as we'd like, then we're going to add some sugar to it. I guess now we're going to have to start adding juice to that bucket. And usually when pouring these out, just do a bit of stabby stabby with a skewer. And that just lets the air get in so it comes out at a nice steady stream and doesn't glug. Also gets rid of some anger. Girl. So we're now going to use the hydrometer to find out the sugar content of the apple juice at the moment and therefore how much alcohol we're likely to get from it. Looking like it's going to be, assuming all the sugar gets turned into alcohol, about five and a half percent. So is there any reason the sugar wouldn't get turned into alcohol? No, but you just, you won't, you'll never get 100% yield. So do you want to add extra sugar? I don't know if we need to. That's what I'm saying, I think this is probably about five. You could add a little bit if you want, or... <laughs> don't get absolutely mortaled off the stuff. Or you just stick like half a kilo in the whole lot. Yeah, go for it. So, I think we are going to add a tiny bit more sugar. Because we can. Just to bring the strength up a little bit, maybe about 6 or 7%. Amazing. So, we're going to chuck... How much should I eat this in here? How much do I put in? put the whole lot in. Okay. So, we're going to chuck a litre of apple juice into a pan, add some extra sugar. And then just heat it up over the hob to let it dissolve. Uh, Maybe about half a percent to a percent. We'll just stick the other half kilo in. Yeah. Okay, we've ended up adding the whole kilo of sugar to the batch. And it's sitting looking like we'll get about 6% alcohol out of it, which is pretty healthy. So, we're about to add some Camden tablets. And we add one of these for every five litres of apple juice. So we'll be adding four. And they just kill all the naturally occurring yeast and bugs that are in the apple juice. So that when we add our own yeast tomorrow, it's the only yeast that's going to be interacting with the sugar. And the way that we do this is we crush the tablets in between two teaspoons so it turns it into a powder. So that's all the Camden tablets in and they just naturally evaporate over the next 24 hours. So we need to wait for that to happen before we put in the yeast, otherwise it would kill the yeast as well. So now the Camden tablets are in, it's time to add the pectolase. And the pectolase just helps clear the plant matter, giving us a nice clear cider. And we add one teaspoonful for every gallon again, so that would be four teaspoonfuls. And this just helps to clear the plant matter, um, giving us a nice clear cider. Oh, shall we put the lid on? <laughs> so, make yourself comfy. Wait for 24 hours. You're not waiting here. <laughs> you waiting Am there? I... Is that it? You're going to stay there the whole night? It's now been 24 hours and the Camden tablets that we added previously will all have dissipated. So we can now add our own yeast to the apple juice to convert the sugar into alcohol to give us our yummy cider. We've got our yeast here. Just rip the top off. You can mix this in with water beforehand, but we should be alright just sprinkling it over the top. And this is about the right amount, one packet for up to about 25 litres, 20 litres. So, we've now pitched the yeast in, and when we pop the top on, that should be good for about 5-7 to seven days as the first fermentation takes place. And the gas that comes in the top will all be carbon dioxide, therefore stopping any of the outside gases getting in, causing it to go bad. And again, in five to seven days, we'll reinvestigate and then we'll stick it into demijohns to ferment for another three or four weeks, probably. So it's been about a week. We've got all our apple juice that's been fermenting in there. That'll probably be about three, maybe four percent. And we're about to pop it into the demijohns, these guys over here, to ferment for probably another two or three weeks, but basically until the bubbling stops. So all the sugar's been turned into alcohol. So we'll have a wee look and see what it looks like. 
That definitely smells like cider. <laughs> and we can see this foam here, which is from the yeast. We've got the demijohns. These have all been sterilized just by leaving them with some water with a couple of teaspoonfuls of this in it. So we're now gonna rack off the cider from the fermentation tub into the demijohns using the siphon. We pop this in. And you just need to give this a suck now until it comes down to the end. And then we just open the tap and that's all gonna just flow quite freely now. So how many demijohns are we gonna get? We're definitely gonna get four. I don't know if we'll have enough for five. Ta-da! Cider, 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 hey! So we've now decanted all the cider into the demijohns from the fermentation tub. I'm surrounded by cider, I'm quite happy. <laughs> we've got these bubblers on them. Hopefully quite soon, this is gonna start bubbling a bit more as the yeast carries on converting the sugar into alcohol. And because we've got these bubblers on the top, this is now a sealed system. So it should stop any of the outside air with all the natural beasties and bugs in it, getting inside and turning our cider into vinegar. We'll leave this in here until it's stopped bubbling because that means that the fermentation process is complete. As much sugar that's going to get turned into alcohol has been, which should typically take about two or three weeks. And then it will be ready for bottling. Where were we at with this? Apple and pear cider. It yes. was apple and pear, wasn't yes. it? It's been quite some time since we did any filming for this. So we've got one demijohn left to bottle of apple and pear cider. Andy has very kindly already bottled the other demijohns. What's the light blue caps? So that's sweetened and a bit of sugar to make it fizzy. Okay, and the dark blue? Is just nothing, as it is. So dry still cider? Just as it comes, yep. Excellent. And this will be... And the light blue will be sweet and fizzy? Should be, yep. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> so we've got one demijohn left to do. So let's crack on and show you how we do it. So we're going to make this one sweet and fizzy as well. And it's been in the demijohn now for... Uh, well, I've got it written here on the side, the 24th of November, 2021. Yeah, so about three months or something. So that's going to be completely flat just now. We're wanting to have sweet and fizzy cider. So we're going to put a teaspoonful, not a teaspoonful, a half tablespoon of sugar into each bottle, which will cause a second fermentation. And because the cap's on, the gas has got nowhere to go, and that's going to give us our fizz. And then we're going to put a half tablespoon of xylitol in, which, being a non-fermenting sweetener, will just take the edge off a little bit and give it a little bit of zing. Not too much xylitol, we don't want it to be like jam, but just enough to take the dryness away. So we don't even need a teaspoon? No, I don't think it really makes a lot of difference. No. Maybe it does. I always think it could do with a tiny bit more fizz, but don't put a heap teaspoon in, actually measure it, because every time I don't measure it properly and just heap a teaspoon in, it always comes too fizzy. Don't get too fizzy. I think you'll find you do. Do you remember at like last party we had and um, everyone kept drinking the toffee apple cider and every time we opened the bottle it was like <laughs> cider everywhere. I feel like I'm still clearing up like <laughs> sticky like cider, like dried down blobbles on the floor everywhere. <laughs> so we just use a funnel because it's the easiest way to get the sugar and the xylitol into the bottles before we add the cider. How many bottles have you got here? 13. <laughs> Are these going to end up being far too fizzy? Probably. <laughs> right, on with the xylitol. I'll just take these out of the way as Andy puts the xylitol in. So we don't put too much in any of them. So now we've got all our bottles filled with xylitol and sugar. It's time to get the cider into these bottles. So we'll remove the bung and the bubblash. So I'm going to pop this demijohn on top of this upturned pot because we need the height. If you've got a wee towel. Oh, this almost terrifies me slightly. So I know that looks really unstable, but hopefully it'll be fine. So the sediment catcher and all the tubing and the bottles have all been sterilized. So I'm now going to pop this into the bottom of the demijohn really carefully so I don't kick up any sediment in the bottom there. And Andy is going to sook on the end. All right. There's not too much there, so you're all right. Ooh. Okay. All right. Yeah, go for it. So 
started on apples and pears and I'm really quite proud of this. I really hope it's good. And when this is done, don't put it down, go quickly get a glass and you can actually try some. Ooh, yum. Excellent. We'll just do it that way? Yeah. So to tell the difference between the two different styles of cider we've done this time, we've used either light blue bottle tops or dark blue bottle tops. The sweet fizzy ones are going to be light blue. Put that out of the way. There you go, Andy. Place the bottle cap on top. Use your dunker or whatever it's called. Secure bottle cap on top of bottle. And then give it a wee shake. I suppose we should both crack on, should we? Well, I just... I'll stick caps on and you could dunk. As long as I don't fire one at you that's like not I've got a, not got a cap on, I'd start shaking that instead. The first time I've shaken it, I haven't actually put the cap on. Oh, really? <laughs> Contents fired everywhere. Mm, pretty much. It's a right little conveyor belt, this is. And now we just wait to be able to give this a try and see if it's any good. So let's try some uh, and see what it's like at this stage. Tastes like apple and pear. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit dry. It doesn't have much sweetness to it, but... It has zero sweetness. Oh, actually, you can get that sort of, like, cidery sweet, like that alcohol taste to it. It's definitely got booze in it. Oh, oh yeah. At this stage, it is just flat and dry, but it does taste like boozy, apple pears. It's quite nice. So I presume these ones will taste quite similar to this. Yeah, but as I... <laughs> tried earlier, it goes really well with Ribena. Oh! Well, you do learn something new every day. I <laughs> tried to test it. <laughs> Love that. So, <coughs> are we going to crack open one of these then? We shall give this one a try and see if it is sweeter and fizzier, because Andy bottled these, what, a month ago? Good month ago now, I think. Yeah, definitely some fizz in there. Oh, there definitely is, isn't there? Well, there is plenty of fizz in that. That's lovely. Yeah, you can totally see the difference with the... That is so nice. And actually, I would say just enough fizz. Because a really nice amount of fizz. I mean, it might carry on getting fizzier. Oh. But at the moment, it's... <clears throat> yeah. And the xylitol, like I said, just takes the edge off it. It's not saccharine sweet, but it's just nicely and rounded now. Oh, it's lovely. Can't get drunk tonight. It's a Wednesday night. Don't get drunk tonight, Debra. But that is really, really lovely. Oh, I'm well chuffed with that. Yeah, success. Absolutely. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing how we make apple and pear cider from homegrown apples and pears. If you'd like to try this recipe, I shall leave it down in the description box below. And if you've enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment, share and subscribe. Of course, subscribing is optional, but it is very much appreciated. So thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Cheers.